In this lesson, we're going to be learning about text groups. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom down here to our little text node. I'm gonna double click and open that up. So in our last lesson, we learned how we can just create and edit some of the properties for this text node. And um, I wanna show you now how instead of affecting the entire sentence here, we can start to have a little more per character, per word control over our text using new functionality called text groups. So this is going to be a really, really breakthrough feature for people moving from After Effects to Nuke because now you're going to have so much more control over text um, than ever before in Nuke to where you really can feel like you've got a comparable experience from a motion graphics standpoint. So I wanna show you what I can do with some text groups, just kind of starting on this text we already have. So I'm gonna highlight this word arrived. And as you notice, as I'm highlighting it here, it's also highlighting over here in our message field, which is really nice that we can highlight in either place and it translates to the other uh, place that we can see that. This is really helpful if you need to highlight in the message field, if maybe you have that opacity turned all the way down on something. Um, you don't have to worry about turning it back up and then turning it back down just to be able to set some keyframes for a completely different property. So let's say I want to rotate just this word arrived and not the rest of the sentence. Or maybe I want them both to rotate, but I need them to go in different directions. With text groups, we can achieve that. So I'm going to come over here to my groups tab. And with this word highlighted, I can come down here and hit the little plus sign. And that's going to add a text group for me in the form of an animation layer. So then I can come in and start to play with all of these different properties, but it's going to be um, just for that one word. Now, if I want to rotate the whole thing, maybe in a different direction, I can come back and choose root transform and then start to animate there. Now, this is very helpful because if I say, you know, I don't like the way this is rotating, um, I, I can come right over here and zero that out. And so I don't have to worry about, um, you know, figuring out exactly, you know, trying to do that by hand. But if you do prefer kind of doing things by hand, and you like the real time update of working right in the viewer, we have that functionality as well. So let's say I just want to play with maybe these couple of letters here. I can create a group for those and I don't have to um, use my properties bin. I can come right up here to this tool set, choose create group and you can see a group was created over here and then I have these two buttons right here that I can switch between the edit text and the transform. So if I click transform, you can see a little bounding box is created around the text and I can start to move this around. So this becomes really, really helpful for us if we want um, to be able to control this in a really intuitive way right there in our viewer. Now let's say, um, you know, I want to translate this. So let's say I want this to go into place on this keyframe. I don't even have to try to come over here, right click and set keys. I can just hit the set a key on the current frame and that's going to set a key for all of these properties. And then I can, you know, move this up over here. Maybe I want to scale it up a little bit and I can um, just kind of make that a little bit bigger. And actually I want to, want to make this a little smaller here and then we could go back and then get this in place. Now let's say I've really kind of, you know, made this look crazy and I can't figure out exactly how, you know, this all went before. That's no problem. You can also work back and forth between both the controls up here and over here. So let's say I, I say, okay, I just want to zero this back out. No problem. You can just come in here and add some zeros. Actually for these, you'd want to add ones for the scale. And now that's back in place just as you had expected it to be. And then, you know, maybe, maybe we want to control this 
maybe to be a little bit bigger and you can see those keys now are automatically updated. So then when I come back over here, that gets small again. So some really, really amazing ability here. And you don't even have to create a text group if you don't want to, um, but I, I like doing it so it's there and I can switch between them. But you can see I'm not creating text groups and I'm able to kind of start moving these things around. So um, it's just that I cannot set a keyframe for those. So if I want them to kind of go back in place, I would need to create a group to be able to set those keyframes. But if I just want to kind of move them around and scatter them about, and it doesn't really matter if a keyframe is set, you don't even need to create a group. You can just begin moving things right here in the viewport. Um, so that that's a, a really, really powerful tool for us to be able to um, just kind of play around and um, create motion graphics inside of Nuke with, with unlimited possibilities now that we have this per character ability to create these groups and transformations. So let's go ahead and jump into our next lesson where we'll be able to do some 3D text work and we'll, we'll be working on importing a 3D object to use as text inside of Nuke. So let's go ahead and move on to our next clip.